There are few groups in America that Republicans love to attack more than the poor. In the minds of Republicans, anyone that isn't wealthy is just a lazy government moocher, and that's why they want to destroy the welfare system. But these attacks are based on absolute lies, and I have Howard Nations with me now to talk about the real problems with welfare in America. Howard, uh, we've heard close to all of the Republican candidates so far tell us, you know, we got to do something about welfare. Republican politicians tell us, look, these people would rather sit back, relax, you know, not work because they're getting welfare. They're getting all these benefits. I mean, hell, they're getting rich off of it. These people are living too high on the hog, I guess. What is the reality of welfare and government assistance in America today? Well, as the millennials would say, that's so last century. <laughs> uh, the fact of the matter is that welfare has now been replaced by very few programs, uh, particularly SNAP, which is a current form of uh, uh, food stamps, uh, and CHIP, which is a state uh, child health insurance, which has been supplemented now by Obamacare. And then the big thing is the EITC, which is the Earned Income Tax Credit. And these are all pro-work uh, welfare systems. These are aid to people who have a job. And as a result of that, they've gotten bipartisan support. But let me give you an example of how this works. You have a woman with a child. Uh, she's working at a salary of uh, $17,500 a year. And let's just take back in 2009. Uh, after tax, she takes home $1,325 a month. Now, there's no welfare for her, but there is the uh, earned income tax credit in that at the end of the year, she gets back more money than she paid in. So she effectively gets a $3,800 refund, and the only uh, supplement she's entitled to in, in addition to that is the SNAP, which is for food. That's the food stamps. So her total cash and food aid uh, was $5,700 per year, which is effectively a 36% pay raise from the federal government. That's for the woman who is working. Now, she loses her job. At that point, she loses her $17,500 earnings, and she loses the $1,300 of the net from the government, and all she's entitled to at this point is $367 a month, which is, can be used exclusively for food. There is no more welfare. So, so somebody in this situation, which this happens frequently, I mean, this, this is not, you know, one, one person it's happened to. I mean, this happens all the time. People lose their jobs. A lot more are about to lose their jobs thanks to TPP. And we're, yeah. we're doing nothing. I mean, really, we, we're doing nothing because welfare has effectively been destroyed in America was very strong, very, very helpful for a long time. Where did we go wrong? Well, the question is, who killed the welfare queen? Uh, the welfare queen was killed by a former Democratic Union president by the name of Ronald Reagan. Uh, Reagan, as the uh, governor of California, was anti-welfare, but in 76, he was looking for the opportunity to run for president against uh, Ford. And so he came up with a speech in 1976 where he coined the term welfare queen. Now, to understand how everything came together for Reagan perfectly in 76 and got him elected president in 80, we have to look back at the history of the, of the welfare system. Welfare actually came out of the uh, as post-Civil War when the states we had an awful lot of young widowed mothers and orphaned children uh, after the Civil War. Uh, so the states set up the Mother's Aid programs, they called them. But by the Depression in uh, 28 and thereafter, the states ran out of money, couldn't do that anymore. So in 35, uh, as, part of his, uh, uh, as part of his Social Security system, his new system he's setting up, FDR set up the first aid to families with dependent children. It was a cash assistance to the economically needy. There was no time limit on it, no job requirement, no need to prove your inability to work. Uh, it was a part of the Social Security program. Uh, the, the idea was that these uh, women who were on this program would work their way into Social Security eventually uh, because he had set up, it, it was a part of the Social Security program. 
Uh, in the 30s, there were a few hundred thousand people receiving aid to dependent children. By 62, there were 3.6 million. Um, as planned, the widowed moms had moved on to receive the Social Security. However, you had a new problem. You had single moms and divorcees who were increasing the usage with the result that you had a, a wide race-based disparity among the states in distribution of funds. African-American women in the South got pennies on the dollar compared to what white women in the North were getting. And then the South began, especially the states began removing single moms. Single moms became the issue, not widowed moms, but single moms became the issue. And they began, began removing them completely from the aid to dependent children roles. Well, you know, a, a lot of this is the, the, the nightmare of the Republican Party. We, we hear about FDR, there were no time limits, there were no job requirements, but at the same time back then people weren't using the same talking points we hear today that, oh, well, if we let people be lazy and just give them money, they're going to be lazy. Republicans inherently think the American public is a, a bunch of just lazy freeloaders, and if we give them money, they're going to continue that way. But FDR understood that people sometimes, God forbid, they fall on hard times. And when they do, we're America, we're the strongest country in the world. We got to help them out. We got to be an example for the rest of the world and say, look what happens when our people, uh, they can't work. We help them out. They lose their job. We help them out. You know, the, the father dies in, in war. We help the family out. And somewhere along the lines uh, between FDR saying this and, and Ronald Reagan coming to power in, in 76 and 80, he turned this into the worst concept America's ever created. Well, in between those two, FDR and Reagan, uh, there was, F, uh, there was uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson. And Johnson understood the same thing that FDR understood. FDR was his mentor and his hero. And in 1962, in a book called The Other America, Poverty in the United States, Michael Harrington showed the nation that in a time of unparalleled prosperity, this sound familiar? In a time of unparalleled prosperity, 25% of Americans, which was 40 to 50 million people, lived in poverty. Gee, could that ever happen again? The assassination of Kennedy changed everything because when Lyndon Johnson became president, he created the Great Society and he began his war on poverty. And he took tours, he took Air Force One into the small towns in Appalachia where the press followed him. So the whole country got to see the abject poverty of 25% of Americans. RFK came along, he toured Appalachia and the uh, Mississippi Delta. Uh, and his, his assassination inspired these minorities to try to move forward uh, and, on, on their own and, and carry his carry his mantra forward. Um, Marion Wright created the Children's Defense Fund. She was an aide to RFK, and she picked up the mantle with her husband, Peter Edelman, and they, they got together with Lyndon Baines Johnson, and between them they created more programs to aid the poor than has been passed at any time in history. And so right now, after all these programs were created, we're still looking at, at mostly those same areas. I mean, we Appalachia, not much has changed since then. I mean, the Mississippi Delta area, not much has changed. That's not to say that it didn't change over that period of time. But because of the constant attacks, because of the new policies that came in in the 1980s, and then, uh, you know, uh, we'll, we'll get to Bill Clinton in a minute, but he, he was not much better than Reagan. So... We, we put these places back to where they were 70 years ago. I mean, to me, that's, that's astounding that we don't yeah. realize what we're letting these politicians do. Uh, you know, we're fighting back, obviously, to an extent here. But if we don't have everybody fighting back, they're going to take us back to the Dust Bowl. They're going to take us back to the Great yeah. Depression. They're going to take us back to, you know, post-Civil War society. Uh, which the state of Alabama is already trying to do by you yeah. know, preventing all African-Americans from voting. So yeah. uh, let's, let's fast forward. Reagan props up this idea of the welfare queen, uh, goes in, tries to gut the program altogether, 
And then Bill Clinton comes along, strong Democratic president. What happens once he gets in office? Well, Reagan had the, the ideal concept. He, in 76, aid to dependent children actually peaked at that point. And so he came along and created uh, the welfare queen because it was a perfect thing for him because he found a perfect model for his welfare queen. There's a woman named Linda Taylor. Uh, and in 1976, he first used the term welfare queen. And the story he told was this. He said she used 80 names, 30 addresses, 15 phone numbers to collect food stamps, Social Security benefits, Veterans Administration uh, benefits by four fake deceased vet husbands that she never had, that never existed. Plus she collected welfare. Her tax-free cash income alone was running $150,000 a year. Now the fact of the matter was Linda Taylor was she was investigated for homicide, she was uh, for kidnapping, for baby trafficking, she was implicated in insurance fraud. She was a true villain. But for Reagan, she was the perfect welfare queen. And through that, welfare queen became portrayed as a black woman decked out in her furs, driving her Cadillac to the welfare office to pick up her check. The fact is, the, typic the typical recipient of the aid to dependent children was white. She was widowed or divorced. And, but you, you know, Reagan, just like today, you never let the truth interfere with a good election theme that'll rally the base. So along came, along came uh, Bubba. And in 1996, he followed suit right along behind Reagan. And he, he did away with the aid to dependent children. And uh, it's, it's, then they replaced it with the, uh, what we talked about originally, the earned in income tax credit and, and the, uh, the, the other welfare systems that were use, in use at the time be, were gone. Uh, and they've been replaced by the current system, which has really knocked major, major holes in the safety net. You know, I, 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 th I think to sum it up here, because unfortunately we're out of time, but people need to understand, don't listen to Republicans. The only problem with welfare is that we're not doing enough. Howard, thank you very much for telling us this story today.